Well, hello everyone, good afternoon. My name is Rich Longo and I'll be your host for today's presentation. I wanna thank you for joining us for another Flycast Partners webinar. Today's webinar topic will cover BMC Discovery, presented by none other than our own Kyle Hamilton. Kyle is a software engineer for Flycast Partners with well over 25 years in the IT service management space, and his career started as a network engineer for Pro Systems and was quickly hired by Network Associates as a professional services consultant, where he delivered ITSM solutions all around the world for thousands of customers. Kyle's primary focus is on ITIL processes and architecture and has an extensive knowledge of CMDB and asset management projects and also deals with automation and management solutions such as BMC Client Manager and BMC Discovery. Kyle has been a certified consultant for Front Range, Peregrine Software, Remedy, Service Desk Express, Remedy Force, Discovery, Client Management, Ivante, as well as being, as well as being an ITIL certified and Microsoft M. CSE and many others. Before we get started, Kyle, let me introduce our organization. Flycast Partners is here to deliver a seriously amazing IT experience. We are founded and staffed by personnel that have many years of experience in the IT space and took the best ideas from these collective experiences and added the best components necessary to grow and become a leading value-added reseller in the North American IT market. We offer best-in-class implementation services and training in ITSM, ITAM, batch processing, capacity optimization with cost control, business artificial intelligence, and enterprise service management, all using nothing but the best ITIL practices. Our professional services team can easily scale up or down in order to meet the IT needs of any organization, regardless of how big you are, your complexity or budgetary restrictions. We offer implementation services both on-site and remote, as well as training to reinforce your company's long-term IT success. Our ongoing remote administration and support service offerings will enable your organization to focus on those normal day-to-day -day operations, saving you both precious time and money. I encourage you to reach out to us directly at 844-FLYCAST, that's 844-359-2278, or simply visit our website at www.flycastpartners.com and chat with one of our ITSM specialists in the right-hand corner, or post run our website, look at upcoming webinars that may interest you or your coworkers. Take a look at some of the different training offerings that we have here at Flycast Partners. There might be a course just for you. You can actually search for a variety of different courses that may seem interesting. Maybe some things you might want to bone up on. Just go ahead and use our newly added search bar to find the courses that are most appropriate. You can also check out new technologies, the latest technologies that are out there that we have here at Flycast Partners. Uh, take a look at everything from IT service management into the latest data tools. And I also encourage you to just simply take a look at some of our process consulting options. It may, folks, just simply be that you need to get the stakeholders in the same room and communicating with each other once again to get things realigned. Without further delay, I am gonna turn this over to Kyle, our presenter today, Kyle Hamilton. And I wanna remind everyone that if you have questions today, please type those questions in the question and answer section of this WebEx. Kyle will answer as many questions as he can by the end of today's time for today's webinar. So if you'll please type in any questions that you have in the Q&A section of this WebEx, we'll try to get it to as many of your questions as possible. And with that, I'm gonna be quiet here, Kyle, and let you take it from here. I've got you unmuted, I can see your screen. Uh, and good afternoon to everybody. I uh, hope your day's going well so far. Hopefully this uh, continues that, that current course. So before I get into actually looking at some of the, the data that you can uh, receive or get back with BMC Discovery, I'll talk a little bit about some of the, the key aspects of it as a solution. Number one, and maybe one of the, the most important, is its method of delivery. This is a solution from BMC that 
um, comes deployed as a software appliance. So that is essentially a completely hardened um, version of, of Linux that has been built specifically for this purpose. And what that translates uh, to you is you don't have to build a system. You don't have to worry about licensing the OS. You don't have to worry about database. You don't have to worry about setting it up and configuring it. This is a tool that is completely self-contained in that, in that one virtual instance, which can simply be put on the physical host of your choice. Um, and the only real configuration aspect associated with it is to give it an IP address with which to communicate. So to be able to deploy this is extremely rapid because there's no operating system to configure, no licensing to have to acquire, everything's self-contained, ready to go. You simply put that appliance where you want, and you can have scans of your, your data center taking place within you know, the first 15, 20 minutes and start having some valuable information back, uh, if not within you know, that hour, within an hour or two, so that you can start make, using that information to make uh, key business decisions. Now, the, the second aspect to make note of is it's also an agentless tool. So this doesn't require any agents to be installed on any devices either. So other than that one virtual appliance, you have no software or hardware to deploy, nothing to be installed, uh, reconfigured, everything um, is ready to go. Essentially, the, the gun is loaded, and all I have to do is start pointing it at different subnets of your network to start running that discovery. Everything from hardware and device discovery to one of the key aspects, which is dependencies and relationships, I'm not just telling you what's out there, but how is it related, how is it tied into other applications and other databases, other servers. And the latest version we're looking at today has also been extended to allow that same kind of discovery capability to extend from um, not only your data center, but in the other private clouds as well as public clouds, so that you can have a holistic picture of your enterprise from those cloud resources that you may be leveraging in cloud platforms all the way down to the racks and the blades and servers that are sitting in your data center proper. And representing the data center is another key component of this is its its primary focus is on the data center. So when we talk about what BMC Discovery is, is focused on building out what, what it's focused on discovering for you, and it's primarily the back of house. It's the infrastructure like your switches and routers and servers and those critical back end devices that are not being directly used day to day by users, but they're nonetheless extremely critical to the environment in terms of providing service and providing uptime. So its primary focus is you know, making sure that you can map that data center and understand what you have, how it's configured, uh, where it is, and things of that nature, how it's related, so that this could be, this kind of information could be used to support, it could be a data center consolidation effort, it could be an overall asset management project. It could be disaster recovery and trying to make sure and understand what you need to have backups of, things like that. So being able to identify everything on that, sitting on that back end that's critical to your business so that you can manage it effectively and make decisions as to how to handle it if, if something were to go uh, down and you were to lose a particular business service or device. So, Richard, unless there's any questions you see coming through, I'll continue on. We actually do have a question from Eileen. What are the benefits of storage discovery overall, but also for storage owners as well as app mappers and management? Um, if I understand the question, the, the, the BBC discovery solution maps not only, uh, and I'm not sure if you're talking about, it could be HBA storage, it could be network attacks, attached storage, um, you know, external devices that are being leveraged. And what it does is it provides you the ability to interrogate those uh, network storage devices, those HBA uh, devices, 
to be able to pull all the information out of them without having to deploy an agent that you would need about you know everything from the operating system, you know build and version, host information, application version and information related to all that the applications running on that host, and to be able to allow you to see all of the devices that are relying on that storage, whether it's uh, NAS storage or SAN storage, so that you can see not only who's tapping in and utilizing that network storage, but also what kind of space is, is still remaining um, so that you can make decisions as to you know, how to, how to better manage that network storage, whether it's increasing capacity due to current volume or whether it's due to being able to move people around between different uh, storage volumes um, based on you know, information you can find through the discovery to find out where's the, the place that has the most capacity remaining available. And we can take a look at some reports that'll, that'll show you some of that information. Anything else, Rich? And I hope I got that. If I, if I didn't get the gist of that question correct, please feel free to provide more info. Eileen, go ahead and, and update us on any other additional information you're looking for on that one. And as of right now, that is the only question I have, but folks, please don't forget, you can simply type in your question in the Q&A section of this WebEx, and Kyle will try and answer as many as he can get to today. Okay. So first, let me um, start by talking a little bit about how all of this is accomplished, and then we'll, we'll take a look at some of the results. Um, as I mentioned, you don't have to deploy any agents. So typically within the first 10 to 15 minutes of logging into your administrative console here, one of the first things you'll do is begin to go through and start to set up all those discovery processes, discovery scans that, that you want to point at different subnets and parts of your network or part of your cloud provider so that you can find out what's out there on that part of your network and start looking at the details and making decisions as to what you want and need to do with it, how it best needs to be managed. So this session here is where the administrator can go through and start creating those discovery scans, pointing it at the network and capturing that hardware and software detail. And you'll see those are typically done by, it could be done with a single IP address, it could be done with a range of addresses or you can use CIDR notation, you know, net, uh, subnet notation to be able to, to identify what you know, part of the network you want to scan. So that these can be done either on a scheduled basis, which is, is typical, or on a snapshot basis, like you see most of these here, which can just be run as needed whenever you know, desired by just simply selecting that particular scan now button. So one of the the nice things about being able to go in and set up and schedule these scans is so that, number one, you have different types of devices with different levels of criticality. Some need to be scanned more often, some need to be scanned less often. Um, very little change is taking place, so they need to have to constantly be pinging it to find out what's new if nothing's ever new. Um, number two is the ability just to simply break up all of you know, the traffic and the effort on your networks. So you're not inundating your network trying to do everything at once, uh, but being able to break that down into logical groups, whether it's based on operating system or based on purpose or based on, you know, whether it's production or test environment, things like that, so that you can break up these discovery scans and make sure that you're scanning everything as frequently as needed, but you're also using these to break up all of that, that network traffic and all the, the packets going back and forth so that you can blend this into the current environment without you know, um, tampering or uh, you know, slowing down applications and network you know, traffic that's already underway. Now, it supports, through this discovery, a broad range of tools, both hardware and software. The discovery is actually done by what's called patterns. You'll see in my instance here, I am hundreds, thousands and thousands of patterns. So these patterns are what are actually used to go out and allow you to query your network. And using these patterns, and we'll say, we'll look at a, we'll look at a 
kind of a typical database pattern. And the idea of this is, is not to get you to understand, you know, how to edit these patterns or create these patterns. You certainly don't have to do that. These are all things that are updated on a monthly basis. You'll see here, this is from the, um, the uh, February update. It's the latest uh, technology update. And what this does is it provides you all of the, the information and you'll see down here in this pattern to allow you to go out and, and properly query and interact with SQL Server and find out everything you want to know about it. So without getting into the details of the script or this pattern, this pattern is what goes out and actually executes against that uh, device to help you determine what version of SQL Server is on it, how is it configured, where the drive's located, things like that. So these patterns, which you can either just uh, as you'll see, take those monthly downloads and activate those that you feel are, are needed within your environment or activate them all. Or you can go through and even create your own custom patterns to be able to accurately discover and identify in-house or custom built applications that are not off the shelf and nobody else is going to know anything about them. But you have the capacity to be able to go in and build a pattern that you can run against your environment that will allow you to accurately pinpoint every instance of that custom app or that database application or whatever that may be so that through these patterns you can configure the tool in such a way that it's actively and accurately identifying everything you have out there and giving you all the information you need and want on those devices as well. Now as you go out and you run these discovery uh, processes on your environment, the, the key get and all the key data is typically available to you in either your dashboard views. We're looking at kind of the standard baseline dashboard here. There's other ones we'll take a look at. This is your main interface to get you know, active results of that data. And it does that, it breaks all of that information down in several logical groups for you here on this dashboard by type, number one, being able to understand hosts, physical hosts, virtual hosts, printers, routers, switches, um, everything all the way up to mainframe discovery. This will actually capture everything from an IBM AS400 to mainframe to uh, a Windows or Linux or Unix or what have you server. So everything, well, everything is available to you here through this dashboard by type. So I can easily go in if I want to investigate or dig further into my, all my virtual systems within my environment. You know, unless I have kind of a tabular list that's presenting hundreds of results here. And each one of these, I can select an individual instance. And you'll notice it'll kind of plot and chart and graph that instance for me so I can start to look at it. Now, when you're looking at this particular graphic, you'll notice that as I expand these sections out, and it's kind of collapsed when I first start looking, but as I want to investigate further, this is where I can start digging into details. In this case, as you notice by the name at the top, this is actually a discovery is run against an AWS instance. So with BMC Discovery, as I mentioned, it's not just limited to your data center. We can reach into AWS, we can reach into Azure, we can go into uh, OpenStack, and we can pull every last piece of server and software information out of those cloud platforms that you can on your own internal servers and your own internal systems. And this discovery, this relationship diagram you see here, gives you the ability, you'll notice, to continue you know, expanding this graphic so as you, you know, as you see here, I've got an Amazon virtual application, virtual system, and it's providing several functions. You know, it's a collection point, basically a, a host provider for multiple hosts running, you know, see different uh, uh, instances of MySQL and Postgres and things like that, supporting BMC discoveries you see here. And it gives users the ability to go out and dive into detail related to this. Pardon me, I'm going to give you guys a little bit better view here, so that 
as I want to expand out and look at, you know, if I know I'm leveraging AWS on the West Coast and the East Coast and Central, being able to open up each one of those individually so I can go to the East, I go to the East Coast, I can take a look at the Virginia Data Center and I can tell you exactly what's running in that Virginia Data Center and to the applications and all of the, the relationships and dependencies and in this case, um, devices that are, you know, applications that are actively communicating with each other over a particular port. So this level of detail is all something that BMC Discovery is capable of going out and gathering. Literally, this, this discovery, excuse me, takes place in about, uh, I'd say maybe five, ten minutes. And this graphic is complete. And you have detail on everything from the overall host and devices running in the cloud to individual applications that are running you know, on that particular device or host and being able to take any of those and expand those out to see any other related data that might exist out there so that everywhere you have additional connections hanging off, you can you know, expand this out so that you can understand exactly how everything's sitting. Now the other benefit of BMC Discovery is your ability to take all of this discovered data and then model on top of it and build on top of it to make it meaningful to you. So if you're looking at this right now, you know, this may may not, you know, to a lot of people make a whole lot of sense. Um, so if you want to go in and start building your logical services and, and applications and systems on top of this, and that's where I can go in and we'll say, um, let's take you know, a particular group of machines maybe running in this AWS instance. So let's say I want to grab, I'm grab everything right here on that graph. And I'm going to say I want to model that. Because I know what that is. So I'm going to say I want to create a new model. And you see it kind of blows away everything else that I didn't ask for. And now what this allows me to do is I could take these applications, these um, IP address pools, um, this host running in AWS and give it some business context. I actually identify what it is, what it's doing. So maybe in this case, I would say this is my... Uh, So this is security and malware. So maybe this particular group of machines is providing some type of security, right? security application, be AV or malware, anti-malware software. So that I can go in and group those together, and once I've created this, started creating this model, I can go in and start adding attributes on top of the data that it's already found for me, all the details, I can now go in and identify it and say this is a security application. And we'll say, actually, let's do, uh, we'll do um, AV. And we'll add that as an attribute to those systems, those devices and everything we see in the map. I can even maybe go in and say, um, App version, and it will say maybe it's 2.0. All right, so I add all these attributes on top of that discovered data. When I'm, and I may just save this and come back to it later. So I don't have to do anything with it at this point. I can just start working on it. Maybe I get pulled away on something else. I need to come back later and finish it. But at some point, when I finish modeling this and I finish building and identifying different pieces and calling them out and giving them values, then I can publish this model so that essentially everything that I've done at that point gets put back into the database, back into the application, so that now it can be pulled back out by myself or somebody else that's viewing it. So in this case, You'll notice I have a new, a new component that shows up on my map, right? The, the identifier that I've lumped on all these devices now that say, you know, 
this IP pool and this load balancing device and this cluster of servers and all of these different components represent my security and malware system. Right? So all of this software and hardware now is contained in something I'm calling you know, security and malware so that what happens now is anytime I get an alert or alarm or if you're doing monitoring on your network, that information can be made available. I don't typically want to see a notification that says IP address 172.31.100.243 isn't responding. I want to know that my security and malware system is impacted. So by giving you the ability to append data and model on top of the discovered data inside of BMC Discovery, you can really go in and create some, some value to the data so that it's meaningful to the individual looking at it and relying on it, and it's accurate and complete to the best of your ability. Now, if I go back to my dashboard view, you also notice that there are several different types of dashboards that are available. Now, this baseline dashboard, as I mentioned, breaks out in different categories. It will help you identify potential problems in your environment, whether those could be problems related to um, a lot of communication taking place, but no understanding of what it is. So you need to figure out why all these devices are talking to the one in the center. Or Kyle, we do we do have a question that was probably a, a more appropriate about a minute or so ago from Robert. I don't know if you can answer this or not, but what does the export look like? Can he populate a CMDB? Yeah, absolutely. Now, depending upon which CMDB, there's a lot of pre-built connectors. Of course, anything within the BMC realm, um, those integrations are there already. So to be able to, now you can take and just export the data out of here if you know if you want um, both as graphics and data files that could be put in a three ring binder or an operation center or what have you. But if you're looking to actually synchronize with an external source, then there are actual synchronization processes you can set up for your CMDB so that all this data just gets piped you know straight in there either via REST API or if you're dealing with BMC product, you know, some specific APIs for our Atrium CMDB and or Remedy Force. And Kyle Robert comes back and says Microsoft System Center. Yeah, so Microsoft System Center would be an example where you're gonna take the REST API and just query the data, you know, out of BMC Discovery and populate. Uh... Now, I will say this, when you're talking about Microsoft, I, I'm not sure if you're talking about SCCM, NCCM, keep in mind, is doing client discovery. So that's the other side of the estate. So typically, um, you would not be um, bringing SCCM data in here, but SCCM data along with BMC discovery data would go into your CMDB to give you all the devices, front of house and back of house in one place. Was there any more to that, Rich? He said, okay, thanks. So I guess you answered okay. his question. Thank okay. you, Robert. Yeah, thanks for the question. Now, there's also lots of additional information that you can dig into through these uh, dashboard views. Um, for example, I'm gonna take uh, hardware reference data for what? Hardware reference data um, allows us to, uh, once we identify all those devices, to be able to pull all the, the hardware specs those machines so that without having to uh, go through and you know, query individual devices, I can go through and scan my environment and tell you which devices are consuming the most power, which devices are putting out the most heat. So when we talked about before some of the different use cases, uh, if you're consolidating the data center, uh, this is one I recommend the customers start with. Identify the ones that eat up the most power. Identify the ones that are requiring the most cooling you know, and start you know, consolidating and start retiring uh, by you know, pulling up some of this data and identifying those 
you know, big offenders. So that I want to target these devices the first ones to figure out. And I start digging into details and figuring out, you know, which ones can be, you know, consolidated, maybe which ones can't. And I may want to take, you know, from there, I may want to go in and grab maybe two or three of these that are in that that list and say, well, I want to take a look, you know, back at that model and see what else, what all are they doing, right? So again, this is where having the dependencies and relationships, I may understand one component or aspect of a device, but it may be doing lots of different things for different people. So being able to understand everything that that device does, what well, all the services it provides, all the databases and application servers that it connects to, so that before I start ripping things out and making changes, I can understand what the potential outcome of that would be. Now, for any one of these devices in this list, just by clicking on it, it'll bring up, kind of center your diagram on that device, but then down at the bottom, you also have the details for the device. Right? So I can tell you the operating system and OS support. We do um, what's called extended data as well. What uh, extended data will do is provide you information like this. You lost you know, OS support for this OS you know, years ago, right? and probably at high risk. Um, and that same kind of information is available in its own dashboard, which is extremely valuable uh, to be able to highlight and pinpoint those things that, whether it's operating systems or whether it's applications, it's, you know, your support's expiring in three months, uh, your extended support's expiring in nine, or it expired two years ago, as well as just some general breakdowns of the type of environment, you know, operating OS breakdowns and things like that, so you can understand the distribution of those OSs throughout your data center. And so if you're trying to consolidate servers, you know, maybe I want to start tacking these. I've still got, you know, a 2000, two 2,000 boxes running around out there. You know, there's a good candidate right there to get those upgraded or moved, one of the two. So being able to highlight and pinpoint, you know, some key information like that, um, run out of the box using that extended vendor information. The other one, I'll mention here, you see we go down here to software products. So, you know, kind of a life cycle analysis, the same thing with OS, but a breakdown for all your applications. How many database, you know, relational database applications are we using? How many different antivirus applications are out there floating around, um, and how do those relate to, you know, support risk and end-of-life risk and things like that, so that you can have dashboards built for all types of purposes, whether you have users focused on, you know, just software, focused on hardware, focused on the cloud, whatever the case may be. Now, on top of the dashboards, there's also a rich set of reports, which can be put, you know, those may be put right on your dashboard as well. So you see here, I've got a couple of hot button reports that I've got just on my dashboard so I can go in and say, hey, you know, show me all my, you know, my Microsoft software and break it down by category. And so maybe I go in, well, I know what that's probably going to be. So I could go in real quickly. Whoop, Maybe not, maybe not development tools, let's just say. Let's say, let's see if we got integration at here. And when I run that, you know, and get the results, then again, I can go into any of these, and I'm looking at it, you know, I'm, I'm looking at software instances, right? These are SQL servers running in Azure. These are local clusters in my data center. And the same ability to be able to click on those and have it center, remember, it's taking me back. Now I can see, based on a model somebody's built, that this is part of the payroll system. All right, so everything I'm looking at now, now I'm looking at payroll. So I can now go in and drill into the payroll system and say, hey, 
Uh, anybody can come in and query this and say, show me the payroll system, and it's going to pull out all these software instances. It's going to pull out this load balancer. It's going to pull out these hosts running on these subnets. But now, because we went in and built that model and identified this is, here's our security SOT system, here's our payroll, here's all these different applications. Now I'm able to go in at any point in time and query that out and say, show me payroll, show me you know, my internet service, things like that. Last but not least, one of the other great things that can be done with BMC Discovery is let's take a, let's take a particular report. Let's take this one right here. One thing that BMC Discovery is great at is what they call reasoning. So with most tools that do discovery, they have to discover something directly to be able to, to understand it. If I want to know about a server, I have to discover that server. In the case of BMC Discovery, to find out about a server, um, I don't necessarily have to discover it. I can find out about it because it's mentioned by some other server. It may be a service or a port that's open and it's pointing to an IP address, one like you see here, um, but we haven't scanned that host yet. So in short, what, what this type of report does is it tells you about the things that you don't yet know about. This is essentially a, a, a list of IP addresses saying, these are out there, they're doing something in your environment, but you haven't yet done any discovery on them, and you might want to because they're communicating with some of your other devices. So I can take this list and feed this right back into discovery so that I can then go out and find out what's on 66 and what's at dot seven and all these addresses to figure out the rest of what that map might look like that I don't yet know about. So it's intelligent enough through the through the patterns that we talk about to be able to look and see that um, and a good example would be a, a cold standby. So you've got a cluster of machines, a cluster of SQL databases running in your data center. Three of them are hot, or maybe two of them are hot, two of them are cold. And they're just sitting there waiting for the first two to to uh, go south before they, they light up. In most cases, when you run discovery, you're going to find out about the two hot servers, the two cold. They're never going to show up because they're completely powered off. There's not even you know a light on. So you're not going to get any discovery of those boxes. Now with BMC discovery, you'll find out about those the minute it queries the first two. Because when we talk to the first two SQL servers, they're going to tell us that, hey, if I fail, I fail over to this IP address. And it's pretty easy at that point to infer that if it's failing over that address, it's probably running Windows and it's probably running Microsoft SQL Server. So with just that information alone, we can create that graphic in the map with the two cold standby servers, even though they're completely powered off and can't talk to them at all, they're still going to appear in your map and your graphic because we know that they're there. Then you can take information like in a report like this and actually go out and find out more about it if you want. But it'll alert it to things like that. Um, being able to, you're you know, trying to underpin or support a change management process with all of this asset information, which is one of the, the big you know, um, requirements that the customers usually come looking at BMC Discovery for, so they can better triage and understand, assess, and approve their changes because right now everything's in everybody's heads and it's scattered around through 20 different people. And you have to get everybody in a room together to talk it all through to feel comfortable you know, that you understand everything. So being able to have, to use all those relationships and dependencies that BMC Discovery determines for you and be able to allow you to run a report like this that can say, hey, here, here are those areas of the discovery of your data center where you've got some potential impact, you know, related to, you know, a host environment. In this case, you know, my, that payroll system we we're talking about. So that if I need to go in and maybe I need to go in and re-architect this differently 
you know, take a look at this and set up another load balance server out there or something, or you know, just find out more. Maybe and see we don't have another one there. So some great information uh, is available out of the box that you'll have back in minutes, um, and be, start being able to make heads or tails of everything you've got out there in your data center, how it's talking, and have that populated into your service desk of choice or you know, your CMDB that you may be using so that you can start to you know, build those models, put some of that you know, business um, uh, service information into BMC Discovery. And once you've pretty well got it set up, you can imagine this is kind of a set it up and forget it type of application that once you to make sure that you're scanning everything on the, on the schedule that you want, um, then it's just simply a matter of watching those dashboards, running the reports, building your models and things on top of that data to keep you know the application up and running. Um, but it's something that consumes very little ongoing administration and effort except for maybe some of the modeling that you want to do on top of that data. Um, but typically most customers within, you know, gosh, within the first day I've seen customers map their entire data center and, and start looking for other things to, to move on to. So it's certainly possible, you know, within a week, uh, typically at, at, on the outside, to have your entire backbone mapped out and everything uh, completely uh, you know, drawn out for you in BMC Discovery uh, with minimal minimal effort. Now, I know we've got supposed to be about maybe two or three minutes left on the clock, so I'll open it back up. Rich, if we've got any questions come in or anybody <laughs> wants to ask one, now's the time. <clears throat> That's right, folks. Type your questions down in the Q&A section of this WebEx. We'll be happy to get to as many as we can today. I do have a question for you coming from another Robert. Uh, probably should have followed this up earlier when we were talking about the other Robert Fernandez's questions. But Robert wants to know, would Discovery be the middleware to connect SCCM to Remedy 8.2? Great question. No, no. So like in that instance, BMC Discovery is going to feed directly into Atrium. SCCM feeds directly into Atrium. And then Atrium, Atrium is going to chew on that data and, and you know, use its reconciliation rules to, to spit something out the other side of Atrium for you. But it wouldn't be, you know, SCCM getting tied into Discovery, which then gets tied into Atrium. It would be SCCM to Atrium and BMC Discovery to Atrium. Okay, and the, another Robert asks, uh, you want to know what the rough cost of this tool is, and that's a great question, Robert. I, I know that for myself on the marketing side and, and Kyle being from the technical side, neither one of us know exactly what the pricing is on that, but we'd be happy to uh, connect you with one of our account reps that would be able to help you get that pricing. So if you want to go ahead and email me that question at info at flycastpartners.com or at rich.longo at flycastpartners.com, we'll sync you up with somebody who can get a better answer for you for that. Um, and remember, uh, Flycast Partners is able to get better pricing than most because of our special relationship that we do have with BMC, which enables us to even get uh, better pricing than even some of the BMC reps can get you uh, because of that relationship we have with them. Uh, any other questions, folks, that you have, please type them in now. We still have a couple more minutes left, and we still have Kyle available uh, for your answers. So please take advantage of this time uh, with Kyle. It's not very often that we get him on here uh, to answer questions for folks. Anything else to add, Kyle, to, to anything that uh, – any of these other things that have come up throughout the day? Um, no, I don't think so. I think maybe you know, related to the couple questions about um, SCCM, I think it's important to, to note that uh, I would say probably 90% of customers running BMC Discovery are also using, if it's not SCCM, uh, you know, be BMC client management that's doing the client side. It could be Dell Case. It could be, uh, gosh, what else we got there? Land Desk. I've seen Solar Winds. So this, the data can be, you know, um, fed into the CMDB equally, so that regardless of what client tool you're using, whether it's SCCM or otherwise, the design of this is so that this is giving you the data center 
and those pieces that SCCM is not, because SCCM is obviously you know agent based, or agent driven, um, and a lot of times that's why you know customers don't want it on their servers. You know, another agent that they have to run, and of course things like switches, routers, mainframes, you know everything on down, network printers, the devices that can't run agents. You know, those are the things that you typically only find out a little bit about when BMC Discovery um, and those patterns, it'll allow you to go in. You know, that's the big difference is I can go in with BMC Discovery and I can get every last piece of information off of out of an application or off of a system as if I'm sitting at the command line. So through those those patterns that we looked at earlier, you've got command line access to these devices. So it's not just doing an SNMP query and that's kind of what you get. It's providing credentials, it's logging in, it's issuing command line commands, show interfaces, show ethernet, show port, um, and pulling every last piece of data back off those machines and devices that you want through those scripts. Whereas SCCM and most of the other agent-based tools you know, they're performing the same WMI queries and kind of capturing information in the same way. Very little for you, if any, to configure that discovery. It's kind of you get what you get. Uh, whereas here, you've got command line ability to go in and script whatever information you want off those devices. So you tend, tend to get a lot more detail out of BMC discovery. But the key point I want to make is most customers have an SCCM and Discovery running side by side, one giving you the, the desktops and laptops, and BMC Discovery giving you the back of house to give you that full picture. Now, we do have another question uh, from Mr. Clements. Mr. Clements wants to know, so SCCM to Atrium to Discovery to Remedy ITSM, can it go from SCCM to Atrium to Remedy ITSM? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So your SCCM data gets fed into Atrium, discovery data gets fed into Atrium, and then Remedy, you know, ARS is going to be plugged into the other side of that Atrium database. So whatever's going in from discovery and SCCM, the intent is it's coming out the other side, whether it's going into Remedy or it's going into Remedy Force or it's going into Footprints or something else. You know, there's um, virtually anything can, can connect and consume data from that Atrium CMDB, um, and so it's just a matter of what information you want to put in. It's all available to Remedy as well as any other ITSM tool. And it's Kyle, important it looks to like that's all for our those that are thinking for the about day. or understand Atrium that Atrium is provided along with BMC Discovery. So even if you don't have it. Atrium comes with BMC Discovery. You don't have to use it. I'm not using Atrium here. You know, I'm just using the BMC Discovery database, but Atrium is a part of BMC Discovery, not a separate license. So if you wanted to stand Atrium up, looking forward to feeding it you know, into Remedy ARS or something along those lines, then Atrium's already there and ready for you if you don't already have it run. Kyle, that's all our questions for today, and I, I think we've got quite a few things answered, which has is, is been a great presentation. I want to thank you for your time today. Um, well, most importantly, I want to thank our audience today for taking time out of your busy day. And if you still have questions, pick up the phone, dial one eight four four flycast that's 844-359-2278. We'll answer your questions for you or email us at info at flycastpartners.com. That's I-N-F-O at flycastpartners.com. We'll get an answer for you in the next five business days. Thank you once again, everyone, and Kyle. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. Everyone have a great afternoon. All right. Enjoy your weekend, folks. Thank you. Bye-bye.